welcome back to learning partner so in this video we are going to see how we can create reusable table component like from the basic to advanced level i mean basic means we won't have any control over the data we will be showing just a normal reusable table right so again it's a reusable table right so reusable component so obviously we are going to make use of input and the output properties so reusable table will be responsible to show the data along with some buttons Right. So, uh, and for the API calls, I will be just making use of the JSON placeholder API to get the data that will be users. So this API call we will be making. So first thing, let's try for a simple table and then we will make it a dynamic. So in this is a component I have created, JSON user component. Here I have to make API call. So in constructor, I will create object of private HTTP client service. Right, I'm going to need an array. So users array, this is a variable. It is going to be array of object. Then get users. Right, this is a function. In that function, I will be calling this dot http dot get method. Right, API call the get API call is there. This is a URL. And after that URL, we need to subscribe whatever the data we get. So dot subscribe, round bracket, round bracket, result, colon any, arrow operator, right? So whatever the data I get from this API that I'm going to hold in this particular array, that is nothing but result. We need to implement lifecycle event that is on in it. So we will need a function that is ng on in it. So because API call should be triggered only from the lifecycle event, that's why we are create, no, that's why we have to implement this API. We should not trigger API call from the constructor. That is just a thumb rule we normally follow, right? So on the page load, we are going to make the API call. We are going to get the data and we have stored that into this particular variable. So here I will just create a row inside that column, let's say six or Let's make it eight and inside that I will create a normal table. First, we will implement like how do we do the ng for everything in the component itself, then we will make it dynamic. So T head, then TR, TH, we need serial number, right? So this is the basic thing like everywhere we show the serial number, the name, let's see what data we get. Let's say name, username, email, phone number and website things we can show. So name. Let me just copy paste. Username, email, phone, and website. Yeah, so website we can show. Right, so T head is complete. Then we have T body. Inside T body, we will have TR, and on NG power will be on the TR because that is what we are going to iterate. So NG power let user of after that our array name that will be users array always try to copy paste if you don't you might make a spelling mistake and then you will find like why what is going wrong and you won't find it right so we need a serial number so we just have to create a variable let sr is equal to index we are going to store index into this sr variable but indexing will normally start from zero so we just have to increment it so that it will start from one then td round bracket round bracket now user dot just to save time i'm writing this because this is going to be common right so i mean just copy paste now i just need to copy the fields always whenever you are inter when you are using interpolation from any api objects always try to copy paste it because you don't know the exact spelling or anything you might do something wrong but you won't get the error but data will also be visible right so always try to copy paste these things and this is phone and this is website right then let's add a class to the table bootstrap class that is table table b o r b e r e model let's save and check we should see the table along with some data of 10 records right so you can see we have got data and that is visible over here let's make it 12 only 
right now this is a normal table now we just have to create one more component that will be a reusable component for the table right so let's create a table so in the shared portal or reusable folder is there i will create one component over here ng generate component it's uh, my table name is already there let's say void table right so this is the just a component i'm creating for creating my reusable table component so enter one thing with the reusable component we don't create a route of it right ideally we should not create it because obviously it is using input and output so why it is not necessary that we are going to access this component as a route right so we never create a route of the reusable component right so this component is created now the thing is this was a table right so we can copy this whole code right and paste it into our reusable table HTML now so if you think whenever you create any reusable component now you should think properly like what things you can make dynamic so you can see here this th it is going to be it is repeating so we can create an array right where we can make this thing dynamic same like this also so first thing first input we are creating just a basic version so let me just note it down what how we are going to do so first way is with just one input means with just one input we will create our reusable table that will be array first way okay so let's create an input at the rate input why it is not suggesting let's try it over here first input round bracket table data colon in square bracket is equal to empty right so we have created an input now this is my selector i'm going to use this into my json now i will comment this so actual table i have commented now this i will put it over here and for this component we have one input so that input is nothing but table data so here input and I will send my actual array that is users array. I will pass it over here. Right. Now we will start to write the code in the reusable table. Right. So here you can see in table data, you will get all the elements data, right? Whatever the uh, how number of elements uh, you have got from that particular API that you are sending to this particular element. Now we need to know like how many columns are there. Right. So this i will use now this thing should be dynamic serial number we can keep it as a static but remaining things will be dynamic so i'm just removing this only one th will be here star ng for okay before this we need to see how many keys are going to be there in my particular object what i mean if you can see there are so many keys right so what we need to do is we just need to get the keys like how many keys are there so we can get the keys from any object using object dot keys method so here let me just implement constructor and here i am taking column keys it will be string array okay now what i need to do i need to get the keys in this particular table so that i can get like this dot column keys is equal to object dot keys then what we need in the table array we are going to get the array so this dot table array dot square bracket of zero just one record i'm trying to read so in this particular variable i'm going to get the keys i have in all the object so let's Paste that over here or let's not do that we will again get confused let me just undo this or simply we what we can do we will create one more 
input that will hold the column array. Means what are the columns I have? Columns array. It will be string array. Mt is equal to mt. Right. So we need to send the columns also from our parent component. So that will be JSON placeholder, this HTML is equal to square bracket. Now, this column array, what we are going to do, whatever the column we need to display in our table, that array we are going to create, right? So here, string array, right? So let me just create. Now, name property. Let's copy it from here only. Username, email, phone, and the website. These are the columns I'm going to have, right? So I have created an array in HTML only for this input. Now, in white table, I'm going to use this array to iterate over the ng power. So, let column of column array, right? So whatever the column name I have, that I will paste it over here. So this will be column because this is a string array. Now, next thing, in we have a second element that is table data. So now table data. So first thing is right TR, right? So how many TR we are going to need? How num What number of data we have? So that we are going to decide over here. So this is correct. Now, after that, this is static because we are going to need the serial number. So this TD, just like this serial number, it will be static only, right? After that, what we need to do is how many TDs we are going to need, just like this, how many columns we have. So same for loop, we are going to use it over here, right? So I will just print one over here to see how many columns we get. Let's say even check. So you can see. What number of columns we have, those number of TDs we have got, right? The first part is done. Now we just need to print the data into that particular column. Means in username column, I should get the username. In email, I should get the email. So for that, what we are going to do, so we have got user over here. Let me just print it. User, with JSON pipe, we will see the data then you will understand how we are going to extract. So you can see this is the whole object, right? And inside that, this column also is also there. So first, before that, I will print the column. Now, so you can see name is there and then we have an object. So how do we retrieve particular field using our key, right? So we have got property also, and in the, we have got object also. From that object, this property is over here. This property is over here. This property is over here. So we just need to read particular field from that particular object, right? So this is our, let me just comment it out. In user, we have got whole object. So that's why user dot, then we can make use of the column. Right? From user, we are trying to print the particular column. Means key. So let's see. Something is wrong. Let's see if we get error. Might be we need to access that using square brackets and square bracket on inside that our column name. Let's see now. Right? So now we have got the data because object we can access using dot and in square bracket also we can pass the key. So this was here we were getting the key. So we have put that inside the square bracket. So from user object, we are just printing the particular key value. So you get the particular name, email and email according to that particular column. So this is very basic, right? So with, with just two input, first is the actual data and second is the column array we have shown the same thing into our reusable table, right? Now, this is very basic table, but let's say you need some buttons also. Let's say well, what we normally do in table is edit and the delete, right? Basically, if we talk about basic CRUD operation, 
in table we need edit or the delete button also so for that either what we can do in our html we can pass one more column that will be action right so if we have action if we have added one action column so we will get one more column over here now in the last td we need to add the buttons right so in here we just need to create one more div over here i will explain like why because in the column we are getting action also now if the column name is action we need to show the button so that's why star ng if equal to if column is equal to is equal to action we know like in the array we are going to send the action right so this we can compare it over here if the column name is action then we are going to show the button else we are going to print the actual data not means if the column name is not action then we will print the data if column name is action then we will have edit and the delete button so button plus btn btn SMBTN success. Let's make it edit. Just like that, we will have a delete button also. So delete, we will just add a danger class and it will be delete. So see, with just one property and NGF, we will be able to show that particular thing. So see, in all the column, we are going to get the data. Just in the action column, we have got edit and the delete button. Right. Now, let's say on edit, we need to the edits the data and uh, on delete we need to delete but this operation we are not going to perform in a reusable table because the reusable table is not for a particular api or particular data it is yeah. it is reusable right so we don't have data specific we are not going to do anything so edit and the delete operation will be in the parent component means this json user component right so from when we click on the edit we just need to send data back to the parent component like on which record I have clicked on edit, just like with the delete also. So here we need to send data from para child component to the parent component. Means our child component is reusable table and parent component is JSON user. So we need to send the data back. So let's do that. Right. So we need to create output over here. So input is used to send data from parent component to child component, but to vice versa means from child component to parent component, if we have to send the data, we have to make use of the output. So let's create, let's just add import first output and event emitter also we are going to it because we normally emit the event, right? So first output at the rate output, round bracket, on edit is equal to new event emitter now data we are going to send is object so let's make it any only so first on edit so first output we have created for our edit it's just like this second will be for delete right so two output we have created two input and two output now what we need to do is from these buttons we need to create local events so that is click event edit record and we need to pass the data so that is nothing but user we need to send just like that delete function also click delete record and we need to pass the user whole object we just have to send now we need to create this function edit user and the delete user now both functions are having some data we are sending from the parent uh, from html so we need to catch that item colon any we are also item colon any right so what we need to do now when we click on this particular button we are uh, we are passing some data also that we just need to emit so that is nothing but this dot on edit dot emit and we need to pass our object along with this right in the delete also this dot on delete dot emit an item we need to pass
right? So we have created in outputs and uh, from the normal function, we are just emitting the data, right? Now, in our parent component, so we had two inputs also. Let me just remove this table. This is not needed now. So we had implemented two inputs. So just like that, we need to implement the output also. Right. So input will normally win the square bracket, but output is nothing but event. So we have to make use of the round bracket. So you can see once I added the round bracket, it is suggesting there are two output in this particular tape component. So let's implement first edit. Now, this output is going to get the data, right? Because when we are emitting, we are passing some data. So we need to cache that also. So we cache that data. Okay, let's uh, first create a function, edit user. Now we are in the parent component, right? So when we are going to, when this event, when this event is going to trigger, we are going to get the data also. To cache the data, every time we need to write dollar event only. Okay. Then second event that is on delete. Delete user dollar event. Right. Now let's create this function into our parent component. Now, same again. We are going to get the parameter, right? So we need to cache that over here. Data. Let's add a debugger so that you will understand how we get the data. Then delete user. Same like here also. Data colon any. Here also we will add the debugger. Whenever you are creating something new, writing some logic for the first time, always add a debugger and debug properly. Here also I will add here also. Let's save and check. Let's open the console. Right. Now let's try to edit this Erwin record. If I click on edit, first debugger I will get in the table component. So you can see in white table I have got it. And in item we have got the whole object. Let's just expand. So you can see Erwin record we have got. Now from this reusable table component we are emitting the on output edit with data also if i continue see you have got the edit user function called from our parent component and in data you have got whatever the data we have sent from the child component this is how output work whatever the data we have sent while outputting that event and that data we have received in the parent component this is the edit let's try for the delete let's click on the patricia on click of delete first our function from the reusable, uh, reusable component is getting triggered data we have got continue and same over here also we have got right then in the parent component you can make your edit and the delete api call use uh, reusable table doesn't have to concern about that whatever you do it has just sent the data back right now so we have created our basic table along with edit and delete icon. But let's say this is a reusable table, right? Reusable means everything should be controllable. Let's say in this particular page, I need the edit and the delete button. But let's say in another component, I'm going to use this table, but there I don't need the edit and the delete button. So that you can man manage. Now I'm going to create one more variable. Input round bracket show action button colon boolean by default false i will make it and this variable i will use it on the action button if it is one already ng if is there with and condition i will add this variable if this variable is true and the column action we are getting then only this div will be visible right so now this variable we have to pass it as an input input will be in square bracket is equal to i'm passing false for now now we should not get the data but one thing we're missing is there but let me just explain now you can see delete button is not there but action column is there right so we just have to remove this also so this thing we have to take care like how we manage Okay, 
So action column, we need to remove it. That we need to take care. If we don't have an action, we need to show the button or not that we have taken care, right? Let's make it true and we can pass the action column. Now we will have the edit and the delete button visible. Now, let's say we need to apply pipe. How we are going to apply the pipe? Let's, because pipe are multiple. We have date pipe, string pipe, lowercase, uppercase. We have number pipe also. Based on the data type, we should apply the pipe, right? But if we, with, with this basic table, if we try to apply the pipe, how we are going to determine like for this particular uh, data, we have to apply date or number or something else, right? So now we are going to just advance the actual, our uh, input, right? So when we are the column array we had, right? So column array normally we have created is a string array, but now we need to modify it. It will be array of object. Like, I will just, let me just create first. I'm just going to create a column array now. Column array. Colon a new square bracket square bracket. Now what I need to do is I need to create a column array like what number of column I have. But for each column means for each column I need to specify the data type also. If we get the data type according to that we can apply the pipe right. So let's say header name then data type. It will be string, right? So just like that, we need to create all the columns. So this thing will be dynamic name then user. Now you have a control over actual heading also because previously we had the property just like whatever in the particular key object key we had, right? This is also string. Let's see if we get the date over here somewhere. Okay, date is not there. Let's, I will, I will just add a date. Username, then what things we had? Email, phone number. Email. Phone number. One more thing, that is website. Right. So we will have three field header data type and the actual field name because we are going to need this property now because we are we are reading like this. Right. So we need one more property that is field name. Field name. Field name nothing but name whatever whatever the array we have created right over here. This is nothing but our field name. Particular key in that our object. So let me just paste it. Name. Username. Email. Phone number. Website. Right. So let me just format it. So you can see in our column array, now it is an array of object. Header is there, which we will use to display the heading here. Then field name, this we are going to use it when we have to print the data, right? And the last thing is data type. We will see that. Now, since this is the array, we will pass it instead of this string array, we need to pass the object. Now, in the column array, we are going to get the array of objects. Now we need to make changes into our column. So this column will have no object. So column dot, what we need to display? Header. So header, we will display it over here, right? Why it is saying, okay. So initially we had created this as a string. Now it will be any because it is, we are going to get the array of object. So first thing is done. Now here also, instead of directly column, we need to make use of Field name, right? Here also column dot header. Let's save and check. Our table should behave the same. 
yeah so now you can see our columns are very really proper previously it was whatever the field name we had in the property that we had displayed but now column names are properly and the data is also visible right let's try to add a date so here we have got the array inside this array i'm using for loop for each loop i just need to in insert one more property that is date element dot current date is equal to new because in api response i don't have any date field so i have just added one more field that is current date let's increase this one more column also date and the field name will current date so what i have did is here i have just used a for loop and inside this for loop in each object i'm adding current date so current date and this will be date right so let's say we have created a column array just all the remaining columns are string but we have one date now if it is date we need to add a date pipe right let's just see how does it look so you can see date is visible like this but we don't show date like this we add a pipe right so to handle that again we are going to change our logic now this was the div which is responsible to show the data here we are going to add different span because we are going to use ng if condition star ng if equal to if our column dot now we are going to make use of this data type if column dot data type is equal to is equal to string right then mean we can add a lower case upper case whatever right this is first and this will go over here let's add a upper case pipe a title pipe we can add title case now just like this if we have a date data type so the second if statement then we have to use date pipe so date colon then we can pass format dt hash mmm y y y y right so let's save and check now we should have our proper date pipes also added so we have some okay this was there right so now you can say our title case pipe is also added and date pipe is also added right so this is how we make things dynamic but let's say just someone might have a question like this is again static right i should have a control over it let's say i for one column i need to add a, a lower case and for one column i need to use upper case but if we do like this this is static right this and this also can be controlled by we can add simply pipe over here let's say here we can say what is it what columns are title case let's pass it title case over here again for username i will use upper case this i will use for upper case okay and let's see now in the object we are going to get one more property that is pipe now let's try to make use of that now here instead of column dot I'm not sure like this is going to work or not. And let's try column dot our pipe name. Okay. Okay, I think it won't because it will need that particular thing. So again, we have to make use of ng only. But that will again increase our what we can say coding because there are number of pipes pipe pipes are what we can say limited number of pipes so we just have to start writing ng if and ng if or ng switch case according to the different pipe here so that whatever the pipe we send that particular ng if will get up, applied just like this just explain inside this span again let's see if we have span start ng if And we can have column dot data type instead of column dot data type we will have use pipe is equal to is equal to let's say title case is there 
right if we have to if we have the title case then we will make use of title case because when we apply the pipe it needs directly like this we cannot pass a value to it then if it is upper case then we can use upper case just like this we need to manage right but again it will be complicated so we will just restrict to minimum let me just control z right so this title case we have done one more thing we are going to see is how we can do the filter thing right so let's say on this table i will have a search box over here and whatever i type over there that should be that should get filtered now i just have a function already ready so just copy that paste it now inside this inside this table we will have our search box so above this table i will just create a row called 12 a text box i will need input class form hyphen control let's add a placeholder search let's assign it to the end so we have got full screen let's make it six or let's make it three Okay, so we have got a search box now whenever i type whenever start whenever i start typing i should filter the table now whenever we are doing the client side filtering now now this is just a client side filter we cannot make the server side call we can but again we need to write the code now this was the actual array we were getting from the parent component so just like this i will create filtered data colon any array is equal to array right now what i need to do is whenever i'm going to get the data that data i'm going to store it over here also so in constructor this dot filter data is equal to this dot table data right and instead of directly binding this table data to the actual table we will use filter data over here so let's say if it is working or not no because we have to make use of ng on changes because when constructor is getting called we don't have the data ready so now we have to make use of ng on changes on change so we need to implement ng on changes right so this line i will put it over here let's see if we get the data yeah now it is working fine right so this is the use case of ng on changes so if you have seen constructor doesn't work but if we have write the same code in ng on changes we have got the data because whenever this column property changes means whenever this input value change this ng on changes will trigger again that's why we will get the updated data over here now so we need to create one variable that we will bind to that text box search box colon string is equal to empty and this we will bind to our text box with ng model square bracket round bracket ng model is equal to this now since we have an ng model so we can make use of ng model change event right on search change round bracket and we need to get the latest value so that's why dollar event now let's create this function into our table component We'll just create after this so from front end we are going to get the whatever particular value we have typed into that text box so that we need to value now catch it over a search when data type will be string only right so let's make use of this function test it over here now this is an existing function which get filtered the data so we need to filter the data and store it into this filter data variable so this will go over here right now we need to search the data from the actual array actual array we are going to store into table data so here 
what we are simply, if you can see this code, what we are doing, we are just filtering the table data. And with each key, you can see object dot value, sorry, value. We are trying to match the data. And this search val will go over here. So this to value dot to string lowercase, we are trying to search. And if we got, we are returning true, otherwise flag, right? So let's save and check. Now let's, so you can see if I'm writing Patricia, I'm getting that. Let's say Cameron, I'm getting that. Let's try for a mobile number that is one, two, something. So you can see wherever I have one, two, uh, let's say zero, six. So you can see wherever I have one, two, all those records because one, two is present over here, 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 here. But if I say one, two, eight, nine, only that record will be visible. So you can see we have got one search box that is working for all the columns. Let's say search dot net. So wherever we have dot net here also, where we have dot net in this column. Okay, dot is there. That's why it is searching. Let's try Karina. Yeah. Okay. So this is how we implement the search box. I mean, this code, you can use it to your normal component also whenever you have to do the inline, sorry, client side filtration, right? So this is the uh, end to this video. So we have start, we have start, when we have started, we have created basic table, then with uh, edit and the delete button, adding pipe and then client side filtering also we have did. Again, we can go into detail, like we can add pagination, sorting and so on. But just like this, we can add that things also, right? So that's it with the current video. In next video, again, I will try to cover some more scenarios.